So welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I'm the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're going to be doing another nail design inspired tumbler. My friend Jen gave me this idea again. Thank you, Jen. She just comes up with the best ideas. But this was so fun and simple to do. I really was inspired by this look. I could not wait to get it onto a tumbler. All right, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've spray painted with my base color as like this tan kind of cream color. This is from Color Shot. It's called Skinny Dip. And as soon as that spray paint was dry to the touch, I was ready to start on my quick glitter base. So for a quick glitter base, we're just basically mixing a very fine cut, translucent white opal glitter into our epoxy and spreading that on nice and thick. And it's a quick and easy way to get a beautiful glittery base for our design. So I'm going to spread this on like I normally would. I'm going to hit it with my torch to pop any bubbles and I let this dry for about four to six hours before I moved into a second coat. My second coat is just about 20 milliliters of epoxy, no glitter mixed in this time. And again, we're gonna spread it on like we normally would, hit it with our torch to pop any bubbles, and I let this coat dry for about eight to 10 hours. I am taping off the bottom of my cup for this design. If you want a tutorial on how and why we do that, I will link one down below in the description box that I think you'll find helpful. Next, we're gonna start on our sanding. So I'm just going to do my normal sanding routine. We're gonna sand down around the top rim to expose a fine line of stainless steel. That fine line of stainless steel is where our final layers of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal for our tumbler on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm also gonna sand down the sides if I see any pokey bits, being careful not to scratch the bottom rim, which I am leaving exposed for this design. If you wanted to finish the bottom of your cup like normal, you definitely could, but we're not doing that today. I'm going to clean up all my sanding mess with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. The concept for this design is kind of like a package with a bow or like a ribbon around it. So we're going to use white vinyl for our ribbon today. This is just regular white Oracal 651 vinyl. I'm cutting this into about mm, half inch strips, maybe one inch strips. I'm using my paper trimmer to trim them today so I don't have to pull out my Cricut. I'm going to use my line tool from the Amy's Make Everything. I will have a link for this down below in the description box. I'm gonna use this to just make one line straight down the side of my cup. This is the line that I'm going to use to line up my vinyl ribbon to make sure that it's nice and straight. Once I have my line drawn, I will just apply the white vinyl by hand, lining it up against that pencil line that I just drew down the side. If you could still see the pencil line after you apply your vinyl, simply just erase it with your eraser. I'm gonna trim the edges off here nice and clean with my craft knife, and then we'll apply the same stripe in the same way to the opposite side of our cup. To help me find the true opposite side or a line straight down the center, I put the lid back on my cup and I used the seam found in the lid to line up the other line on the other side. Again, just marking with a pencil with my line tool and then I'll apply that vinyl strip by hand, trimming the ends <laughs> with my craft knife. Now that I have the vertical lines placed, I'm going to place the horizontal line that'll go towards the upper portion of our tumbler. Using one of the dots in my line tool, I will again draw a line with my pencil around the cup. Once I have that line drawn, I'll just use that to line up the horizontal line of our package ribbon. <laughs> Instead of overlapping the pieces of vinyl where they intersect, I just trim them at the edge of the vertical lines with my craft knife, really clean and close. I just like the look of them intersecting together like that. I suppose if you wanted to overlap them, you definitely could. It would certainly be easier, um, but you know me, I like to do things the hard way. 
After applying the vinyl ribbon, I am going to hand draw the pine branches. So using a Posca acrylic paint marker, I'm just going to first draw one kind of longer curved line and then we'll just draw in the needles. I'm going to first draw in the needles with a finer point acrylic marker uh, just because I like to have the different gauge needles I guess, on the pine branch. I thought I thought it looked better. I don't know you can do it however you want but I went in with this fine point first and then I went over it with the thicker one next. Certainly you could cut this out of vinyl if you wanted to. It would be a lot easier. I just couldn't find one. I couldn't find an image that I liked to cut out of vinyl and I thought it would be just as easy to hand draw it. So I did a couple practice runs first before jumping in on the tumbler. And you know you guys this is epoxied so if you mess up you could just wipe it off with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and start over. Once I was done drawing the pine branches, I went in with a thicker paint marker and I added some polka dots just for some kind of added whimsy. That was a detail that was also on the nails, so I thought it would definitely look cute with this. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't like some whimsical polka dots once i got done with the pine needles i also added a cute little decal baby it's cold outside this is a hand-drawn uh, svg that i've had for a while by one of my favorite calligraphy artists i will link it down below and of course once again i'm picking a very detailed uh file today so i'm going to be weeding the decal once I've transferred it onto the tumbler to make my life a little easier. Once I got that decal applied, I did add the same little whimsical polka dots that I put around the pine branches. I also used my acrylic marker to dot my eyes and place my comma, which I lost <laughs> during the weeding process. It's a very intricate decal. Super cute though. And on to the fun part. So I could not find large pearls that looked good with this design. I think the prettiest part of that nail design is the cluster of pearls and jewels in the center of the ribbon and the pine branches. So I'm gonna create my own large pearls. I've got some leftover epoxy here, about 20 milliliters, and I've just mixed in some pearly mica powder. I will link the one I used down below in the description box. And I've already sprayed my jewelry mold here with some rubbing alcohol to help release some bubbles. After I pour my mold, I will spritz it again with the rubbing alcohol, again, to help release the bubbles. <laughs> I made some gold ones too, but I didn't like how they looked with the design. I let these sit overnight before I demolded them, and I used my craft knife to trim away any kind of googly bits along the edges there. And I'm going to use these directly onto my cup. So I've got some liquid fusion glue. I put it into this thick gauge needle. I will link the needle and the glue down below in the description box. And we're gonna just glue these directly onto our tumbler. I have not uh, epoxied over that vinyl yet. You could if you wanted to before this step if you're worried about messing up but I like the liquid fusion because it dries fast enough to where these aren't going to be sliding down the side of the cup after we apply them. They're very heavy, uh, so with like, you know, the Bob Industries five-minute epoxy even, that wasn't fast enough to keep them steady, but the liquid fusion did the trick. After I placed the large white pearls that we made, I'm placing some chrome finish gold pearls in sizes four millimeter up to 10 millimeter. Again, using just a small amount of the glue with my needle and placing them on there. I've also got some really big crystals that I got from Auntie Tay. These I think are like SS 60s maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I've got SS 30 all the way up to SS 60 in this mix that I'm using. And I'm just, again, applying them directly onto the cup to accent those pearls that we added. I just think these pearls are so dang cute. These big ones that we made in the jewelry mold. Think of like green holly leaves and red holly berries. How cute would that be? So much fun. So whimsical. 
Uh, but this little cluster of stones and pearls is just absolutely slaying me. I love this look. <laughs> I just kept adding them until I was satisfied with the look and I let this dry overnight. Now, because we've glued these large pieces directly onto the cup and I haven't epoxied over that vinyl yet, I am going to apply a coat of epoxy, but we're not going to put it over the stones and pearls. So you're gonna see how I do that here in a minute. Because this is supposed to be my final coat, I'm going to wipe it down with some tack cloth just to make sure we get off any kind of lint or debris. And I've got about 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed here. And I'm going to start by applying it to all the like, you know, open sections of the cup, like down the back and along the bottom here. You'll notice I don't have tape along that bottom. I'm going to bring my epoxy just down over the lip of the cup where the uh, paint and glitter ends and then I'll wipe any excess from off the bottom so we don't have any epoxy where it's not supposed to be but I'm also not going to tape off for the final coat. Again I've got a whole tutorial on what I mean by that <laughs> if you need help with finishing off your bottoms if you're like me and you don't want to glitter the bottom because it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, you'll notice what I'm doing here is I am epoxying everywhere but around those stones and pearls, being very careful to avoid them. Once I've got the rest of my cup nicely coated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my turner. You'll notice I don't have a super thick coat here, so if I stop my turner now, everything's not just going to start dripping off, okay? I'm going to stop my turner and I'm going to use my silicone tool and I'm going to very carefully dip just a little bit in and get in all those nooks and crannies around the stones. Not only is this going to hold those stones and pearls in place on our cup tighter, this is going to add for a more finished look because we've just added them onto the cup. I don't, and they're really big pieces. I don't feel comfortable not epoxying around them. I just don't feel like they're going to bond really well. Maybe they would, um, but I just felt like this was the right thing to do, and it looked really good. It didn't go up over the stones at all, so it didn't take away any of the shine. We're just going everywhere around those stones. Obviously, I wouldn't do this if we were using a bunch of teeny tiny stones or if I was doing just a regular bling cup, there's no need to epoxy over or around them. But in this case, uh, it just felt right. So here I am with a silicone brush tool, just getting into all those nooks and crannies very carefully. We don't wanna dwell here for too long because remember we have wet epoxy on all other sides of our cup. We don't want that to run off. But after I get done with getting into all these little spaces here, I'm going to do another once over smoothing out the remaining surfaces of my cup with the epoxy. I'm going to hit it with my torch to pop any bubbles and we're going to let this dry overnight mainly because I'm sick of looking at it. <laughs> And thank heavens that really was the final coat. So we were all done and that's it for this tutorial. What do you guys think? I love this design. Thank you so much, Jen, for inspiring me with that nail design that you sent over. I absolutely love it. This is so my style. You guys, let me know what you thought in the comments and I would love to see your take on this. I am dying to see red berries with some holly leaves, okay? If you make that, tag me in it on social media because I wanna see it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you again soon.
And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.